Hey everyone, happy homebrew Wednesday. Today I'm going to look at a beer, I just got in a, a beer mail trade, it's a homebrew, got from Jonathan, and it's a homebrewed porter that was brewed with, uh, rum, or, sorry not rum soaked, uh, bourbon soaked oak chips. So we're going to take a look at that, and it's one to try to come out of the ball here, so let's get this thing poured. I didn't get the specs on this, I don't know the ABV, so... We'll, uh, we'll just try to go with it and see what we think of it. I asked him, like, you know, you sent me this porter, do you want me to do a video on it? So he said, sure, yeah, do a video, see how it is. So, yeah, let's do it. Color-wise, it's pretty dark. Um, I get some little bit of ruby red brown notes, edges around the glass. The head's pretty much like a light brown, large bubbles on it, decent carbonation coming up. Let's get the aroma on it. Get a lot of like caramel, certainly some some oak tannins. Yeah, there's like a dark fruit th kind of note going on. A lot of raisin character on this one, so uh, let's give it a try. Cheers! Uh, thanks, Jonathan Barry, for uh, shipping this out. Yeah, it's nice. It's just, um, I'm not sure what the deal is, but there's a ton of carbonation up front, like w way over carbonated for the style. It kind of has that tingling carbonation. I don't know if that's maybe like an early sign of an infection or if you just, you know, over primed, you know, with too much priming sugar, but it's got that big tingling notes up front. But once that settles down, you know, I get some some nice roasted notes, some dark chocolate. That caramel comes through. A little bit of uh, you know the raisin notes. Not a ton of like bourbon character, but you know enough to add a little layer of of Yeah, picking up the the bourbon notes in there. That's kind of towards the end. It kind of blends in a bit with the, the chocolate kind of notes on it. Get a little bit of heat from from that, but not too much. Definitely get the flavor in there. Not you know the oak tannins are nice on the nose. Yeah, it's just it's just it's a nice beer. It's just I wish it wasn't so carbonated. Maybe you just swirl this thing around. So, um, you know, it, it tastes fine other than just being really stinging on the palate. So I'm not sure if that's early signs of infection or just overcarbonation, like I mentioned. But other than that, I mean, it's got some good flavors going on. Just, you know, I don't know what the ABV is, but I just keep swirling up massive head. So, anyway, I appreciate you sending it out. Uh, I, I hope you enjoy my vanilla... Russian Imperial Stout I brewed up. I haven't really shared that. Actually, I haven't sent that out to anyone. I've shared it around town, and uh, people seem to enjoy it. But I haven't really sent it out into any beer mails yet. Gave a bottle to Chris Stelts to, to try while he's in town, and said he enjoyed it. So I'm getting some good feedback on that one. I think last I tried it, the vanilla was kind of set, selling in to right where I want it to be. So I don't know if that beer is going to... You know how that vanilla character is going to age over time in that beer, so it might be something to drink fresh. So I just did an update video, so I don't have anything else really to add other than you know I watched watched Toki Homebrew's latest video on maybe the possible next experiment. As far as what I want to do with that one, it's going to be a timing issue with me. I'm brewing a lot lately. I'm pretty much at capacity. It's you know how. Kind of how my schedule goes uh, with work might factor in with that because we have some. Uh, I might have some possibilities where I might be leaving the country again. Like I went to Germany for uh, a little over a week, you know, on a trip, and I, I might have one, maybe two other of those trips coming up as we get in towards the summer. So that might play a role in whether I uh, 
I'm able to do the next Hokey Homebrew Challenge and just fermentation space. You know, I'm, I just, I, I bought a new fermentation bucket with the old one that's now gonna, has the, the Belgian Pale Ale with Brett in it. So that's going to be my souring bucket. So even though I replaced it with, with another one, you know, that's being used up. As I brew more of these sours, I'm going to be doing uh, a lot of smaller experiments. I can be doing full five-gallon batches. So I might be doing two or three-gallon batches, and those are going to go into these little uh, one-gallon jars of apple juice that I use to make a cider. So every time I get some of those jars, I'm going to make a cider out of it, So or an apple wine. I recently followed that Edwards apple wine recipe with mine. I, only, I did a three-gallon batch. Now, with that recipe, he uses five gallons with two pounds of sugar. I did three gallons of apple juice, and then I added in a pound of, of corn sugar and a pound of turbinado sugar. So I took the, the gravity reading on that one, and it was like 10, I forget, like 1070 something, which doesn't sound big in beer terms, but cider, especially using like the wine yeast I'm using, is going to finish really, really dry. So I'm probably looking at about at least 10% on that cider, assuming it's fermented out properly. I haven't checked on it, and it's almost two months old at this point. I've never done anything like it, so I don't really have experience with this yeast. So, you know, I'm going to have, I'm going to be having, so I just, I need to get more you know, fermenter, your carboys, better bottles, whatever to to brew up more. And I, you know, I can only really fit one of them into my chest freezer that I use for temperature controlled fermentations. And as we get into the warmer months here now, I'm going to really want to brew everything in there. So it's just going to be how my fermentation schedule goes. Like right now, I have that quad going in there right now, but after probably a couple weeks, I'm going to transfer that over to my oak barrel. And then I'm getting low on my my really hoppy pale ale right now on draft, and I, I don't have my other keg fixed. So until I do that, I'll only have uh, just one keg going. So that kind of factors in a little bit. I'm hoping to get that other keg up and running again because I want to have two sty two different styles on draft. But probably my next beer is going to be a big hoppy beer because I have a ton of hops in the in the freezer right now that I want to use up. And that, you know, I want to, I, I usually like to keep a very hoppy pale ale or IPA on draft at, at all times. But, you know, as we get in these warmer months, I've never brewed a Hefeweizen up, so I want to do a Hefeweizen. I'd love to do a Berliner Weiss since, uh, I'll just do all the souring, do a sour mash, you know, do, do that whole process and then boil it so I won't have to worry about, you know, my fermenter and stuff seeing any kind of lactobacillus or, any wild yeast. So that's kind of the plan. That's the update. Again, thanks to uh, Jonathan for sending out the uh, the bourbon soaked oak chip porter. Until next time. Oh, I gotta. I was about to do my normal sign off, but I gotta go with SJA Pours uh, sign off here, and that is if I can remember it right. It's been a while. Um, enjoy the fruits of your labor, and brew beer. Cheers.